The new Pixar film Soul has arrived on Disney Plus, telling the story of Joe, a black man in New York who has dreams of becoming a successful jazz musician. That is until his dreams are quite literally flushed down the drain and he is transformed into a cute little fuzz? Okay, so on the surface this might look like nothing, but it is just one more example in an ever-growing trope that is becoming more and more controversial. That trope, the transforming of black animated characters. In this video I'm going to be going through five reasons as to exactly why this is controversial. Welcome to Hakuna Machata, your place for everything diversity and representation in film and TV. First time here? consider subscribing and turning on the bell notification. So before I dive into this list, I'd first love to give a shout out to the novice cinephile who over on Twitter asked me to take a look into this topic. I'll be linking his stuff in the description box down below. Reason number one, it's becoming a pattern. Soul is not the first animated film with a black protagonist who is transformed very early on in the film. In fact, the only other black-led animation in the Disney slash Pixar roster, The Princess of the Frog, sees the exact same thing happening to that protagonist, Tiana. It also happened recently outside of Disney as well. In 2019, Spies in Disguise, Will Smith's character Lance is transformed into a pigeon and spends a hell of a lot of the film as a pigeon. And it's not just limited to black animated characters either, it happens to other minoritized groups as well. Take a look at films like The Emperor's New Groove, Brother Bear, and even to an extent Coco as well. Miguel spends the majority of that film slowly turning into a skeleton. They all fit this pattern. The fact that it is becoming a pattern kind of begs the question as to if Disney can make an animated film with a minoritized lead and have them stay in their own body. Something like this happening time and time again will begin to take on a negative effect and land Disney films into the naughty trope list. Reason number two, it stops audiences learning about the societal pressures these characters go through. Okay, so here I'm going to be looking mainly at Tiana and the Princess and the Frog. We start off with that film with Tiana being a black woman in 1920s New Orleans, wanting to start her own business, build her own restaurant and make her father's famous gumbo for all to enjoy. She is told that she is outbid for the restaurant restaurant space and that a woman of her background should just stick to what it is she's doing rather than try and own a business. But don't worry about all that, you're now a frog! The opportunity for Disney to tell a unique story and show younger audiences that it doesn't matter what background you come from, you can achieve your dreams was lost. The opportunity for Disney to teach younger audiences about systemic racism and the continued after effects of slavery was lost. Imagine the generations of people that would have a deeper understanding about those things because of that film and how that would have a positive knock-on effect in society. But why were those opportunities lost? Well, that leads me on to reason number three. This highlights the lack of diversity behind the camera. Look, I can imagine that when the majority of your writers and directors are not black, it can be very difficult to tell a story of that perspective. And ultimately, there isn't necessarily anything wrong with people of different backgrounds telling other people's stories. It just needs to be handled correctly. And in the case of these films, it was not handled correctly. And if a black person had been at the head of telling these stories, they would have been told in a more authentic way. They would have a greater understanding of the challenges that the characters face, and they'd have a greater understanding of how to overcome those challenges, or maybe not overcome those challenges. So when you don't have black creatives in the room, how do you get around that simple fact? Well, you transform the character into something more palatable. I mean, palatable for who? And that leads me lovingly onto reason number four. Transforming the character changes the story to make it more applicable for a white or, I mean, wider audience. Sorry, I don't know how that crept in. Film is a business, right? And you have to make money, right? And in order to make as much money as possible, you have to make things applicable to a wider audience, right? Wrong. Why does the story about a black woman in 1920s New Orleans not appeal to a wider audience? What is so wrong about the story of a black man who wants to make it as a famous musician in New York? Look, in the film Ratatouille, Linguini struggles making good food, but that doesn't mean he turns into a rat in order to understand how Remy does understand to make good food. Tarzan doesn't have to literally be a gorilla in order to be accepted. And hell, Cinderella gets given a glow up in order to escape her evil stepmother. The point is, other 
the characters didn't need to physically transform in order to meet the needs of the story. No, the story met the needs and the appearance of that character. Reason number five, transforming the character cheapens the experience of the audience represented by that character. I remember watching the initial teaser trailer for Soul and thinking, Yes, Pixar are finally in the mix. They have a black lead animated film. This is going to be an oh wait, he's just dropped down a drain and he's dead and he's turned into a little fucking fuzzball. With only two black lead films in the whole Disney slash Pixar roster and both of those protagonists being transformed into either an animal or a thing, it's really difficult for me and maybe others to feel represented by Disney animation on screen. In a one and a half hour to two hour long film, the main character spends, what, 30 minutes in their own body, kind of leaves me feel wanting, you know, like I'm there at the beginning, like, oh damn, there's someone that looks like me on the screen. Yo, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where did they go? And now look, I'm making this video before I've had a chance to watch Soul and the few YouTubers that I do follow who were able to get early screeners of the film are largely saying that Soul is one of their favorite films of the year. So maybe there is actually a little bit of hope with this film and I'm blowing everything out of proportion, but well, really I'm not because he still is transforming. So this video still stands. Animation films, studios, in particular Disney, need to stop transforming their minoritized characters, hire more diverse creators and let them tell these stories with a more authentic touch and just let the characters breathe, let the characters be the focal point of the story rather than them having to change in order to tell a story that actually kind of means nothing in the end. You know, look at films like Into the Spider-Verse and Moana. These films were fantastic examples of allowing minoritized characters to just be and to let them lead the story going forward rather than have the story do stuff to them. So what is the solution to this problem? Well, I mean, it's kind of simple. Whenever a black-led or minoritized race-led film, animated film is released, watch it, celebrate the fuck out of it. Go onto Netflix right now and watch Canvas. It's a very heartfelt short film. It's only nine minutes long. I'm not going to explain it to you because it's nine minutes and you want to be able to sit down and watch that, but it's beautiful. And we need to be able to tell people to go watch that and watch other black lead animation films when they are released. But if you want to see more videos on animation from me, you can click right here and see why Avatar The Last Airbender is my favorite TV show of all time. And if you want to delve deeper into negative tropes that affect the representation of black people on screen, click this right here and subscribe up there, making sure you turn on your bell notifications. Until next time, Hakuna Machata.